Stop staring. You're missing a movie. Three, four years ago, I got a call out of, a, out of the blue from a French company inquiring about doing a remake of Maniac. And I thought they meant Maniac Cop because I always thought Maniac Cop was my franchise, not Maniac. And no, it was Maniac that they wanted to do it. They flew me to France. I met with Alex Ager, who was a very, who is a very respected filmmaker. I like his movie a lot, High Tension. The, the producer, at the time, he had only really made French movies. Uh, and then after we did the deal, he won the Academy Award for the artist. Suddenly I was in business with people who were like Academy Award winners. It kind of built the momentum. So I was very supportive of it, but I also knew I wanted to stay away. So I really had no uh, input creatively on the movie. I kind of felt there would be too many chefs in the kitchen. It was better left to Alex and Frank and Tomas to make the picture they want to make. And I had confidence that these people have taste, they would do a film that would be uh, a, a respectable film. I think you're incredibly talented. The mages have found the last true romantic. When they told me Elijah Wood, I was shocked. But I also know that Elijah Wood is a great actor. As soon as I started thinking about it and I met Elijah, I immediately saw this was like a Tony Perkins psycho direction to go in. You have this, you know, guy with this kind of man-child, creepy kind of feel to him. Uh, nicest guy in the world, by the way. But he does have a, you know, he could be creepy. This was a really great idea, you know? Really going in such a radically different direction that I could see this working, you know? I could see this working, and I was surprised at how committed he was to the role. Uh, and doing some of the scenes he did, I, 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 was, I was really pleased by it. Please don't scream. You're so beautiful. The first I, I, I saw that it, was a P, that it was going to be done from the killer's POV is when I was sent the first draft of the screenplay. And I thought it was a very bold uh, concept to do. I think it was, I think creatively, it was a very courageous thing to do. I'll leave the fans to decide if it was the right decision or not. What surprised me about the film was showing the scalping within the first few minutes of the movie. That surprised me that you would take what was the signature killing of the first film and do it in the first few minutes of the remake. And the audience applauded, they, they, they liked it. And I appreciated the nod in the scene where he kills the girl in the, uh, in the parking lot uh, where you see his reflection with the knife and the scalp and the side of the van. I thought that was, that was fun. The audience applauded a can. You know, they got it right away. I think you're cute. <clears throat> you like it, Russ? I was shocked when I heard it was invited to Cannes as a midnight show. We pull up to the Palais, and there it is. There's throngs of people on bleachers, and there's cameras. We're on national television in France. Red carpet. I'm like, oh, this is just, this is ridiculous. The theater holds 1,200 people. I thought if 600 people show up, it would be great. I walk in, every seat's filled. And I'm going, oh my God, this is unreal. At the end of the film, there was a standing ovation, but here was the best part. I turn and I lock eyes with Sasha Gray. And I thought, oh my God, what a cherry on the cake. My computer has come alive. There's Sasha Gray giving me a standing ovation, and I'm looking, and she's smiling at me, and I'm going, oh, this is it. I'm in heaven.